as a rock I will build my church And the gates of hell Shall not prevail Come here, man. 63118 Come one, come all Come here, a man God is good I thank God for Pastor Paul How he stands on the word of God And he has courage I thank God for it So at this time We're going to present a song and introduce to others our own pastor, Pastor Paul King. Yes. So as he comes, let's clap our hands tonight. God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand praise for what we're about to receive. Hallelujah. God is good. And he's worthy of all this praise that we've given him in this room on tonight. It is an honor, amen, and a privilege to stand before you, the saints of the Most High God, amen, in the midst of royalty. And that includes you that's in internet land. We thank God for you, amen, and we encourage you to keep fighting on, amen, to be and become all what God has called you to be. As we looked him in prayer, Father, we definitely thank you on tonight. We give your name, the glory, and all the honor. Oh, what a joy it is to praise you. What a joy it is to magnify you. We want to give you the glory for being in this room with us. Lord, your power, your spirit, your anointing, your presence, oh, is worth being in. We pray on tonight that you would move continually by your spirit to meet the needs of the hearers. Meet the needs of those that are going through, those that are holding on. Those that are encountering all type of trauma. Lord, those that in hospital rooms, oh God, and those that are sick and shut in. We ask you to stretch out your hand. Lord, and let your power of your presence overshadow them and cause them to rise up in you. As we stand on tonight for you, we stand upon your word, your promises. You want tonight that every hearer will be encouraged and everyone that receive and hear your word will come forth in such an alertness and such a, a, a fortitude realizing you have given power and strength over the adversary you have given the church the victory. And we want to thank you for that on tonight. So as we stand to lift up our voice, use these lips of clay that they speak only as thine oracle. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said amen. Amen. Let's give them a praise with our hand clap of our hands just one more time for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is worthy of it all. You can be seated, amen. We thank God tonight for him seeing us here safely, giving us this opportunity on a Friday night to assemble ourselves together and have a hallelujah good time. Amen, praise the Lord. Doing it with like-minded people. You know you, 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 you know you got something when you can praise them and magnify them when you're all by yourself. But oh, I love it the way the Lord put that thing in when he said, don't forsake to assemble. When you can get among your brothers and sisters that got like-minded. And then you can praise them together. It gets better than even when you're by yourself. Amen, praise the Lord. Because that is, that's pleasing in the sight of God. Thank God. And I want to commend the saints that have refused to forsake. That's yet, for, that's yet coming together. Amen. To inspire our brothers and sisters everywhere. Look, hey, come on now. Get, get back in spiritual shape. And you shake yourself off from when she knocked you out. Amen. And get up off that canvas and get back among the saints. Amen. Among the people of God. Press your way out to them services. Get back in them Bible studies. Get back in them weekday services. Amen. Don't just become a Sunday worshiper. Amen. You get up in there with your brothers and sisters that's believing God for miracles. Believing God to transform lives. Amen. Amen. We need one another. Thank God, amen. Your strength matters because God gave it to you. Thank the Lord, amen. We thank God, amen, this night for upon this rock holding this church. I don't have no complaint. Oh, I wouldn't, I, I, hey, amen, praise God. I'm, I feel so privileged to be among those that God has put here for such a time as this. He's up to something. Amen. With this corner over here at Merrimack in Nebraska, 2855, Merrimack in South City of St. Louis, Missouri.
God is up to something and doing great things. We have a word tonight, amen, praise the Lord, uh, that the Lord has given us. Amen. We salute and esteem you all in the presence of the Lord that God has given us coming out of 1 Peter chapter 5 tonight. The Lord give us a word, a direct word, amen, in such a time that we are all facing. Amen. I want you to know whatever you're facing, amen, God is concerned. It makes no difference to seem like whoever don't feel like they're concerned about the things you're concerned about. Amen. When you understand who you are, you got to know your father is concerned about everything that concerns you. Thank God. Amen. In such a time as this, I want this word to penetrate down in the sanctum of your soul that we can find ourselves shifted our mindset if it need to be shifted. And if your mind is already there, it encourages you to keep your mind on God. Amen. Him. Amen. Who has all power in his hand. Thank God, amen. That's just not something that we say, and that's something, that's an experience of the believer because they go through storms, they go through trouble, and they keep their face fixed on him. Amen. Praise God. When the water seems to be high, you look to him, he keep you higher. Amen. Praise God. When it seems to come in strong on you, he makes you stronger. Thank God, then what comes against you? So this is a timely word. I'm, I'm mindful as the Lord spoke through our mother, amen, Lenore Anderson on the last time she stood behind this sacred platform to deliver the message that God gave her, amen, that the devil, he comes to steal. Thank the Lord, amen, a prophetic word, amen, the Lord used the vessel, amen, to speak into the lives of the hero. Because if you walk with God in such a time as this, amen, understanding the hour has grown late, the days are trimmed down, amen, I am without doubt, amen, and know for certainty, amen, that I mean the rage of the devil is coming against you and me, amen, but oh, I want to make sure, amen, the Lord want to make sure we stay right where we need to be, amen, because he promised us upon that rock if we're built there that the gates of hell would not prevail, and because of him, whatever he bring is going to be like a repellent. It's just going to bounce around our off him, amen, because the saints is coming through this thing. Somebody say amen, and we're not coming through barely making it, amen, to the point where, hey, we just bend it all over. He all got me. No, no, no. We're going out treading upon serpents. Amen. Praise the Lord. The saints that we read about in Revelation, they was on that glass sea with all that trouble and fire, and they still had a dance. Oh, help us, Lord. They still were dancing right on in the midst of what they were going through. And that's what the Lord is building up in times like these because he's helping the believers develop a relationship with him that they can realize, amen, he's not far from you. He ain't left you. The devil is going to speak all these things, amen, but they're going to hold fast to the promises of Almighty God. Tonight, if you won't mind, amen, uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, Lady Lisa, and I want you to read for me, if you can grab for me the scriptures, verses 6 through 9, just 6 through 9. We're going to say some things the Lord has given us, amen, and we're going to be done. But everything that we say on tonight, if we have a title, the title will be Be Alert. Okay. Your ab be alert. Be alert of what? Your adversary, the devil. Amen. That's what you be alert. Be alert of him. Amen. As you walk with God, praise the Lord. And I want to tap those on the shoulder that may not know God yet and the department of these sins. Amen. That they can be aware that all the trouble that you have faced and that you may be facing, it's not God that's doing it to you. Amen. Oh, thank God for John 10 and 10. Amen. That lets us know and Jesus made everybody to know. I ain't come to steal, kill, and destroy. It's the enemy, the devil himself that come to steal, kill, and destroy. And Jesus made the proclamation that said, I have come that you might have life. Oh, my God. And that more abundantly. He wants you with the abundance of life. So it's, a, it's about coming to understanding what life is. That you don't get deceived and tricked by the devil. Amen. And I want the saints to know, amen. Don't be wanting for nothing else when you got everything you need. Amen. He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. 
Somebody said, I don't know what you're talking about, Doc. My light bill need to be paid. Look, that's why we're here tonight. To help you to know you got a God that has given you all things. All he wants you to do is trust. Put your confidence and your commitment in him. And you will find out God cares about his children. Somebody say amen. So it's about learning of the Lord, learning of him, growing in him, maturing in him, that we can be an example to help others along the way. So let's look at something tonight that one of the elder apostles, the chief pastor, amen, Peter, wrote this general epistle to the church after getting ready to let, let the church know, hey, get ready, arm yourself now. As much as Christ is suffering in the flesh, you got to know now it's going to be some things we're going to undergo and go through. Amen. But with the mind of Christ, it ain't nothing you can't go through. He didn't want the church, to, the believers, to be ashamed. Amen. But he told them, beloved, don't you think it's strange? Ah, uh, yes, when you get through. Don't think God backed away from you. Some of these folks that's just sitting in church, they see you going through trouble. They say, see what you done did, what you done did. No, no, Doc. Amen. At the end of the day, all those that live godly, amen, going to suffer some things that the enemy is going to bring their way because he don't like the light that's coming off your life. So I just admonish the people, amen, and encourage the people, amen. I mean, God, that will be suffering for your obedience, amen. And if you go through suffering for your disobedience, don't take all day humbling yourself, amen. You humble yourself quick, fast, and in a hurry, amen, that God can be your covering and help you from being smashed. Somebody say amen. And so what he ended up starting doing over there in the fifth chapter of First Peter, he began to exhort the elders. He began to exhort the elders. He got a hold to the elders that because they are the one that's out front, the leaders of the church that have got to know God and that have got out in front that others was looking up to. Amen. That was training and teaching. They were before them. Amen. That he began to exhort them in such a way, praise the Lord, that it if they can be an example of how it's supposed to go, then the ones that's in training to be those soldiers, amen, oh my God, a great army was going to stand up on his feet. Praise the Lord. So if you notice, this chapter 5 was given to the elders, amen. The elders which are among you, I exhort. That's what he said in verse 1, amen, who are also an elder, amen. And I want you to know that elder don't have nothing to do with gender. God help the church today. Amen. Ain't got nothing to do with you. But that elder is that one amen that have grown to know the Lord. It can be a woman or a man. Amen. That run on and walk with God and realize through it all the Lord has been there him. Through it all the Lord has been they stay. Through it all he's been their shelter. Through it all he strengthened them. He's had sustained them. That why, why do we want to get the elders so the elders can tell him if he did it for me I know he can do it for you. Amen. I had to go through the process. I had to go through the ups and the downs. I had to go up mountains and somebody said, boy, back and get to that mountain. Well, I got a news for you. Once you get up there, you got to come down the mountain and you're going to travel on, go back up another mountain. You just need to know, amen, how to maintain the relationship with God no matter where you are at. Somebody say amen. So when we look at this, he was exhorting them and he told them, you feed the flock. Amen. You feed the flock. You train them. You teach them. Amen. You make them to understand who God is and what God has done. Amen. We got a mother. Amen. That God the glory is resting on right now. Amen. That God gave a mandate to. And she said, Pastor, God has given me to gather pastors and let them know this is the hour and the time for them to teach that men might know who God is and what God has done. And I said, Lord, we receive it. Confirmation. Amen. Of our assignment as he has called us to lunch for. And so he got the elders together and he wanted them to know now don't have no spirit trying to be lords over God heritage now. Don't get arrogant. Don't think the people belong to you. Don't think these your sheep. Amen. Don't think these your sheep now. Because hey, we asked the same apostle was one day asked by the Lord, do 
you love me? Amen. Do you love me? Ask them three times. It's in all our battles. It make no difference which version you got. It's in there. Amen. Do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, you know. The first time he asked him, amen, in the King James, the one I read by, amen, he said, look here, do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than the sheep? Because I got use of you. And I need you to stand in my stead. I need you to love me even above them that I can teach you how to take care of them or how to care for them. Somebody say amen. That's what God gave pastors in this hour. He's given them amen to guard and nurture. Amen. I mean to guard. Ain't, ain't trying to control nobody life. Well, you said God. See, you got to get down on your knees because amen. He say guard people. Amen. He say you guard. Amen. The shepherd is on the alert looking at the, the wolf that's trying to come in. Amen. And sit to devour and destroy. Amen. But all Peter said, look at here, uh-uh, don't be arrogant so you can see. Don't lose sight. Think this is all about you being big and the big shot and doing all these different things. It's right before our eyes in the time we live it in. We got men that seem to be bolstering themselves and the flocks and the temples are running over. And they let folks know their legacy is to build churches. Amen. But all caution anybody running around with somebody like that that's acting like they speaking for God because in this last hour that ain't what Jesus said that he was going to use his to do he man he told Peter I give you the keys to the kingdom amen and what you going to do amen I'm going to be on my church I'm going to use you as a vessel you're not going to be building brick and mortar amen but I want you to be on my church I want you to be concerned about the souls of men and women because I am. Because it's not his will that no man perish but all come to repentance. After you get saved, he don't want you perishing because just because you get saved don't mean you made it. Amen. After you get saved, that's the beginning of great things. You just on your way. Amen. Now you got to learn how to walk by faith, live by faith. You got to learn the vocation where you've been called. You got to understand you got to make your calling and election sure. All this is wrapped up with what the master said in the gospel if you continue amen if 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 this hinges on your salvation is linked to where he want to get you to somebody say amen so this exhortation although amen first peter is just five chapters in it this exhortation this exhortation that god gave peter amen is most important in times like these amen and if the church is going to rise up and become what God had made it to be. Amen. It's going to take men that he had chosen in the fivefold to stand up and lift up their voice like a trumpet. Amen. And make, amen, Israel to know who their God is and what God has done in their lives and the power that God has given unto them. Right in the face of defeat, you still got to stand up. Amen. I'm reminded, I'm trying to get to the message, but I'm reminded, amen, when David, amen, was in his process of being made. Amen. Here go Israel when they fought Goliath. Every time Goliath uh, fought Philistines, every time and Goliath came, then I mean everybody went to the rocks and just hid behind the rocks. And some of the leaders today, they act like Israel just went back. Well, I got news for you. Saul ran behind the rocks too. Amen. He wasn't out there talking about, come on, Goliath. He ran right on, right on back there. Amen. With his kingly self. And ran right back there for fear. He hid just like them. But the Lord, my God, had somebody in the back of the mountains that he'll begin to deal with and develop a relationship with that did great things in his life and, and David was such a way, I'm just, see God do things for you sometimes, you can't even tell everybody because folks don't say no you lying, amen, I believe some of them David couldn't even tell his brothers about, amen, run about you know whoop the bear, you ain't whooping nothing, that thing would have killed you, amen, but oh when you know what God has done in your life, amen God runs them into the battle. Amen. Because Israel wasn't being led to victory. They were being led to the rock. Retreat, retreat. It's time to go back. But David heard all that stuff. That giant, that uncircumcised Philistine, that devil, that adversary was 
was saying, and he took a stand for God. It moved David because it vexed that vexed it David righteous soul to hear the enemy, amen, swearing and saying all this stuff about the chosen people of God. Amen. That David heard it and it didn't put running and retreating in his feet. He said, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? It didn't mean that in the natural he's a midget, he's rooted. David said, Look, it ain't gonna be by my strength. Y'all don't know this God I serve. Amen. Because he's more than able to beat this giant to smithereens. Amen. And David stood for God and look what God did. All I'm doing is trying to encourage you tonight. Amen. And exhort you, our adversary. Amen. Look, you got to know you got the victory. And look him in the face. Amen. Don't be one of these believers or Christians with everything is all well. Yes, God. And, and you so got it together. As soon as the devil comes, you don't even know God from the devil. Amen. Your attitude is bad. Your spirit is full of fear. And that ain't why God called the church out. Amen. Oh, no, he didn't. Amen. He wanted the church to be armed. Amen. That they can wrestle against and be victorious. Not, amen, be afraid and be fearful. So let's dive into this on tonight and read and take a hearing of what the Lord said. Because Peter began to talk to him. He said, look, I don't need y'all being lords over God's heritage. And you can always tell when folks have set themselves up as lords. Amen. Because then the people just look at the man. Amen. Because the man don't put their attention on God. He make them how to respect him. And all he do is magnify himself. Amen. Amen. But oh, it's time to start magnifying God. Yeah, yes, it is. It's time to start magnifying God. We got so many preachers and so many now in the church. They so tied into this political stuff that they done forgot the name of Jesus. Amen. They fearful of themselves. They ain't teaching nothing that's in this Bible. And don't realize this Bible gave us all type of comfort. Because at the end of the day, I don't care who get in that seat. Amen. Look at here. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness. Thereof, and all them that dwell therein. Amen. And he still got the same power he had back then. And he can turn the heart of the king whithersoever he will. Amen. If it be Trump, if it be Biden, if it be the rest of these rascals that are sitting in that seat, the earth is the Lord's. And I mean to tell you, ain't no bomb going in this thing. It's going to be the Lord that in this thing. Amen. It ain't in man's hand to end what he didn't make and create. Amen. And this thing is in the hand of God. And so I want to uh, petition and I want to urge the believers. Uh, you get out of CNN and get yourself back in church. Uh, you get up in front of that television and you get back into assembly and sing them Zion songs. Listen to that word being taught that you can get your mind back sitting upon the Lord. Somebody say amen. Oh bless his name. Come on, Lady Lisa. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and read these scriptures so we can get on out the way tonight. And she's going to start reading at verse 6 and go to 9. What do the Bible say? Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Lord, look at here. That he may exalt you in due time. Started the verse out with humble. Keep reading. Casting all your care upon him, mm. for he careth for you. Yes. Be sober. Be so. Be vigilant. Uh huh. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Now, now, if 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 I always have to do this, and I know you that see y'all, 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 King James, but and I don't, I don't, I don't come against nobody that got. I mean, if you got the new King James, whatever, whatever. But sometimes, Amen. You got to measure this thing up and make sure you get the effect and the power of the love at the scripture. Now, when verse 8 she just read, I'm sorry, Lady Lisa, I'm going to let you get there to verse 9. It said, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil. No, now, it didn't say your adversary yourself. It didn't say your adversary, amen, uh, another country. Your adversary, those Caucasians. Uh, your adversary, the Nigerians, the Negroes. Uh, no, 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 no. That, uh, that's an earthly man look at things. That's a carnal mindset. But all this pastor was full of the spirit. And he was causing the people to be elevated. And he wanted to let them know what's behind those actions. Who's really gendering it? Who's really operating within men and women? And if you don't keep a clear understanding that we are 
are going up against a demonic spirit. I mean, Satan powers his demons and devils. You won't make it to this. Amen. Because at the end of the day, you got to know what you wrestle against. You got to know, oh, I know they taught you in all the isms that body and this flesh and long as I'm in it. Oh, I'm just a post sinner saved by grace. When you gonna come on and walk up and understand you a child of God, you a saint of the yeah. most high. It's time to grow up. It's time to mature and come into the place that God has called us unto and realize we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we're going up against powers of Satan. Somebody say amen. Peter them coming up in there writing this letter, tickling nobody and playing with them. He said, your adversary is the devil. But well, hold on, Peter. I got a whole lot of stuff going on, going on in my house. I, I mean, on my job. I mean, these folks acting. He wanted to say, no, look, no, don't get caught up like that. It's the devil that's coming to, to, to distort you. Mess with your, uh, your, your soberness and, and mess with your spirit. Get you beside yourself. He wanted them to know what they're going up against. That devil in people will make them act evil. When you realize what you're fighting against, you can take dominion and be in charge. Just but with this because you stay in your righteousness. Because the Bible said, if your ways please him, he'll make them folks the devil use and behave. Somebody say amen. You ever seen something and sometimes people have experienced it and they walk with God and they've been so exuberant and they enlightened, they intact and God gets gave them faithful. And them same people that seem like bent over backwards didn't even know God to do stuff for you. And as soon as you start getting off the mark and doing all the stuff you shouldn't be doing and mixing and mingling with the word, then all of a sudden their attitude changed towards you. See, for some people, that hits them because they know, amen, that they have trim ways to seek fellowship. But, brother, don't trim no ways to seek fellowship with folks that don't know God. God is counting on you to shine that they may get to know God. Not that you forget God. You're supposed to retain the knowledge of God and build your relationship with him. So he said, your adversary the devil. Now I know for all the intellectual people and theologians, amen, and all these old high intellectual people today, oh, ain't no devil. There is no devil. Amen. Don't you fall for that stuff. There is a devil. Oh, Satan is just some figmentation of your imagination. Yeah, he got you. Amen. Uh -uh, this ain't no figmentation. This is reality. Jesus told us uh, he's coming to kill. He's coming to steal. He's coming to destroy. Destroy what and kill what? Everything I've given you. Amen. And when you are believing, he's giving you a new heart. He's giving you a new mind. He's saved your soul. Everything about you is new that you've been exhorted. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Oh, bless his name. That devil want to get your newness, your freshness, get you back in what you come out of. Make you forget from what with he bought you. Amen. That he can finish what he started. He was destroying us before we got to Christ. But when Christ came, he backed him out of your life. He cast him out of your mind. He pulled him out of every part in you that he was ripping you apart. And he not satisfied. He want to still try to get at you. So I'm not seeking the priest to make you scared of him because I need you to if you're a believer, he's giving you power over the devil. Amen. To as many as receive Christ Jesus, to them gave ye power. Amen. That power was the power to beg God or beg the devil or whimper and whine or we will wobble and fall down. But that power, amen, was to march on in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Oh, your adversary is the devil, and we're going to deal with that tonight. And so he's going as a rowing light. Read on so I can begin to teach you. Read on. Whom resists steadfast in the faith. So I can resist him. I don't have to do what he said. Resist him. Come on. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Now, you got to know something. Whoever feel like they can't, somebody realize I can. I can do all things through Christ. Amen. Well, hey, dog, you can't tell me now that the devil don't do this and the devil don't do that. I can tell you he come to do it, but you ain't got to let him do it. Just because you give in, just because you yield, don't put that on everybody. Amen. You don't have to yield just because somebody else is yield. Amen. Paul told us we are who service we yield ourselves to. Just because the devil come, don't mean you got to give 
been. Just because he brings problems your way, don't mean you got to get to doubting God. Whatever he say, don't change what God has done for you. When you realize the goodness of God, how you couldn't have made it unless the Lord did it for you. How you would have fainted if you had not believed on the Lord. How because you waited patiently upon God, you cried out when you couldn't understand it. You refused to let go. You didn't cast away your confidence. My God, because you stayed in that place, he revealed himself. And you found out, amen, he gave you the strength to fight on in Jesus' name. So when we look at this, amen, it started out. He said, first of all, in verse 6, he said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he might really exalt you in due time. If you think about, amen, it was important that Jesus said, the meek shall inherit the earth. Amen. Humbleness is a fruit of the spirit. Amen. It keeps you in a, a mindset to understand you are dependent upon God. That without him, I can't do nothing. Without him, I'm lost. Without him, I'm broken. I'm shattered. I'm all over the place. But because of him, I can do all things. His strength is made perfect in all that weakness. I used to live in. Amen. You know they miss Paul. They misunderstand Paul. When Paul was seeking the Lord three times to remove something. Amen. And my God Paul thought he was weak. Paul thought he couldn't make it. But Paul held on and said wait a minute God. You've been good to me. You reveal yourself. You brought me all the way up here. I know what I've done and I can't undo it. Amen. But that's a thorn. Amen. In my flesh. I mean people are going to look at me by what I used to do. Lord they throwing it all in my face. But the Lord said, hey, Paul, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. You need to understand that's why I chose you. Because I want them to see somebody that once was, but look at them now. And so Paul said, I'd rather glory in my infirmities. Amen. Yeah, I once did it, but I ain't doing it no more. Don't let nobody hold over your head how you once wore when Christ come into your life. To your life. And that's why we that say we shouldn't look down on people. When they are messed up backwards, this distorted when they are living a life of disobedience and going the wrong way. You're supposed to be the salt and the light. Give them direction and give it to them in compassion and love because that was you one day. Amen. And he changed your life. How we look, look at folks now that we say, look, they don't want God. Look at them. Look, look how you was one day. And the Lord, look beyond all your faults. Look beyond your bad attitude. Look beyond all your bondages and brought you out with a strong hand. God is looking for a church he can use. Somebody say amen. Paul was exhorting them in such a way he said humble yourselves hmm? therefore under the mighty hand of God when you are under his hand you realize it ain't nothing God cannot do. Amen. You realize look at here Lord they know not what they do. You realize they really don't see Lord. Because they don't know you as you have afforded me to know you. So if that means I got to go through and suffer for doing right, talking right, keeping the right attitude, loving when folks don't love me, amen, not rending evil for evil, amen, praying for them that curse me, amen, oh, come on and grow up and be healed. Did you not know every believer that have started this walk with God and this biblical walk with God, amen, they have been through some wars. They have suffered some wounds. They have bled and the Lord has healed them. They have been through some things that seem to have smashed on them. But the Lord himself revived them and helped them. Amen. We've had some scars but when you look back and you can look at that scar, it ain't even tender no more. You know how some of you in your life at six years old, you did something and it scarred your leg, your arm. Amen. It bled real bad. But because you kept living. Amen. Because you kept on that thing heal. And even when it healed, amen, here you are, the age you are, you can look at that scar and remember. Amen. I got a little grandbaby that'll look at my knee and she'll see this scar on there. And this thing happened when I was about 10 years old. And every, and I remember how it got that. Amen. And I mean busted wide open. But the Lord, amen, made me, gave me revelation out of it. Yeah, my saints, they coming in here scarred, but they healed. You can be healed and still got scars. Them scars 
cause let you know, amen, I had some pain one day. Amen, I went through some things one day. It's like the woman that began to have babies. Amen, here it is. She gets stress marks and scars. Them scars make her remember I gave birth. I mean, that pain was something I can't even identify with her. But the Lord brought me through it. And that's how it is in your life when you walk with God and walking by faith and dealing with this devil who's your adversary. Yeah, you're going to gain some scars. But I need you to know he is yet the Lord thy God that healeth thee. Amen. He can stop the bleeding. He can stop the swelling. He can bandage you up. Oh, and pour in the oil. Ah, oh, yes he can. When you didn't have no mobility and you got stiff because you got hurt. And he get through with you, he give you back your mobility. My God, you begin to walk with a limp. But you walked on and got that thing right. This is the day and hour some of you out there need to be healed. Amen. To do the things you went through. It brings you closer to God. Have you found out walking with God as you begin to sojourn and go through your process? You learn, oh, when the trouble come, let me draw nigh to him. Because my father is closer to me now than ever. Amen. Oh, yes, he is. You'll bump to the front, brother, when your trouble start coming your way. Because he loves you just that much. Don't let him hear you complaining. Don't let him hear you murmuring. Don't let him see your spirit bad. Don't get to talking out the out of your neck. Keep your trust in God. Amen. Keep singing those songs you were singing before the trouble come. And if you can keep on singing it, that trouble is just for a moment. Amen. You'll find yourself walking out of your your your, your, your rock the dunch, all your strong winds and the sun to be shining. And you got the same song that you sing. The Lord is my strength. He is my light. God is a good God. It's been by him I've come through. Amen. You don't wait till stuff is over. You shout and praise the Lord while you in it. Keep believing him. Somebody say amen. So we look at it. The first, the first verse in chapter, uh, chapter 5. It said in verse 6. He said humble yourself. Amen. Humble yourself. That means come on into submission. Amen. All right. Yeah. Troubles here. Don't whine about why it come. It's here now. Amen. In order to survive it. You got to stay humble. You got to stay meek. You got to stay in such a way that you realize. Look Lord. You're my help. It's not by my strength. It's by your strength. I need thee every hour. I need you in this day. Amen. You got to humble yourself and walk in humility. Humbleness is a fruit of the spirit. Did y'all not know that? Paul made us know, amen, humbleness is a fruit of the spirit. Amen. And the more you grow, the more humbleness you get. Because you realize, I couldn't have made it if it had not been for the Lord. You realize that that devil would have overtook me if I wouldn't have got to service that night and got that message on how to fight this devil. And that, I mean, that's why the devil don't want people coming. They don't want them to get up in there because it's something about getting in the presence of the Lord. Amen. It's something about getting up in that. Amen. When the spirit of the Lord is at, when it's live in his live action, it's something about being and assembling yourselves together that the Lord right in the midst of your turmoil can speak in the midst of your perplexity and make you to understand all that devil trying to do is get you right back where he once had you. And down in your soul, you say that devil is alive because I ain't going back. Amen. Because you know what? None of us always had what we had now after being saved. You got a purpose in your heart. Look, I'm not returning from which he brought me out of. I'm not going back to the vomit. I'm not going back to that mud. I'm not even talking to the things that led me the wrong way. I don't want none of it in my life. I mean, God, surround me with new people. Surround me with that that loves you. I want to go forward. How about you? Somebody say amen. And so he said, you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. We like hearing that exaltation. Amen. But you got to realize you get exalted once you go through. Amen. You got to go through some things. You got to go through some trials. You got to go through some tests. You got to have the trouble. You got to get to the spot where you don't, you can't figure it out. Amen. The Lord said to her, don't figure it out. Believe
keep your way out. You got to keep having trust in God because he will stretch you to get you to higher heights. Amen. He will challenge you to get you to go deeper. And my God, it seems like you can't see your way. But since you hear this word in your heart and the word is in your heart, you can say, look, Lord, I may not see my way, but I know you are my way because you said I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so I'm going to buckle up and ride you on through this thing. And that's what God is looking for because you got to go through to get exalted. It's first the suffering and then the glory. You don't get, uh, you don't come up high in God without getting challenged by the adversary. He comes. Uh, that evil one comes with evil intention. But God got a way of overturning that evil and making it for your good. Uh, amen. Making him a stepping stone uh, to where you need to get to. Y'all know he told Adam and the garden and Eve and the serpent that look the seed of the woman is going to bruise his heel. Amen. I mean going to bruise his heel. They didn't know what that was all about. Amen. But oh God knew what he was going to do because he was going to give that same seed power over the devil and they were going to walk on him. I mean while you in what you in you're going to say devil you a liar. You can't have me no more. I'm not bowing down to fear because God ain't giving me the spirit of fear but power love and a sound mind. I'm going to roll up my sleeves and fight this fight. You got a purpose in your heart sometime and tell that old devil ah the fight is on. Look here enough is enough. God is waiting on the army to hear the word and rise up. Amen from where with you falling. Where with you lost your life and begin to take back on his armor. Put off that old way of unrighteousness. Put off all these coats that ain't like God and put on the Lord Jesus and say yes to Lord. I need you to do it again. I need you to come on strong with that anointing in my life. I'm tired of being defeated. I'm tired of being conquered. I'm tired of being moody. I don't want to be like a thermostat just going up and down. I want some consistency, some order, uh, and some structure about my life. I want to be strong in you. And when you strong, you ain't got to lose your strength. Somebody say amen. You can mount up over here in the Lord because the Bible tells me so. You can mount up in God. You know, in the natural, he teaches us. You can have strength when you was young. And this natural body get old. And you lose what you once had. But over in the Lord and the spiritual, it don't work like that. Because we keep mounting up. Somebody said, well, see, he's off. Amen. See, you just bound in the natural. It was Brother Philip, uh, Caleb uh, in the Old Testament. When they walked, they walked and fought for so long. And Caleb got over there and said, he kept holding to the promise. He told Josh, remember now, that mountain was promised to me. Give me my mountain. He was old age. Uh, Caleb realized, uh, yeah, I might not be able to run as fast as I used to run. And I might not have the strength to throw the axe and the sword all like that. But I know my God is with me. He will supply. That mountain belonged to me. Give me mine. He still had a warring spirit. And I mean to tell you, I don't care how old you get in the Lord. If you get 90, you can have a warring spirit. I was blessed, amen, not long ago to be in the midst of a mother of science that's going through some things. And while we went there to encourage her, to allow the Lord to use us to be confident, and she began to go forward and talk talk and what came up out of her it got me blessed on today she said Satan the Lord rebukes you amen I mean my God don't tell me God ain't got no soldiers in this house I mean they're in the hospital to be ministered unto and she's fighting the devil she wasn't sitting up there blaming God and wondering if God loved her I mean oh no she's fighting to live fighting to hold on to all the benefits and the promises and look at so many and got their health and strength. Don't have a mind to fight the adversary. Don't have a mind to assemble together. Not looking on the needs of others. And some of us as leaders, you done got out 
there and you think it's all about you. You got away from the biblical text and now it's what you say. But it ain't what you say. It's what the Bible say. It's the law is his way. And, and all you're getting, you got to get an understanding. You got to put this thing together that you may be able to be a blessing to the hearers. Somebody say amen. When we look at this, my God, he told them over there, the mighty hand of God, that he might exalt you. So while you hold on and be consistent in the storm, he exalts you. You hold on, you get your breakthrough. You hold on, you get over it. You hold on, you get through it. God reveals to you his strength. Paul said, oh my God, by me holding on, I found out his strength is made perfect in weakness. When I thought I was weak, I found out I was strong because it's not about my strength, it's about his strength. And I want you to know you can be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. I mean, he give you strength and power, amen, for you to exercise authority against principalities. That devil will tell you you don't feel like it. You got to tell that devil it ain't about what I feel. I shall serve the Lord. I live by the word, not by how I feel. I live by every word of God. And when your spirit line up with the word, I found out the body say, come on here. Amen. And it gets right on in with your spirit. And we are in that hour that we got to know this adversary is coming to steal. He want to hinder. He want to neutralize the church. Amen. He want it inactive. He want it with no life. And that's what I mean so much. If we are apostles and prophets, evangelists and pastors and teachers that we got to equip the saints. You got to give them the equipment and let them know, yes, he's coming, but great is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You got to remember that all power has been given unto you. His weapons are not mighty like ours. Amen. And he got weaponry, but yours is greater. Our weapons are mighty to God, to the pulling down of everything that devil throw at you. I want you to know you can make it in God. We're not here to judge you or condemn you. But brother, we're here to inspire you. It's time to know your adversary. It's time to believe and trust God. Hallelujah. When we look at how he did it, he told him in verse 7, you cast your chaos because the devil have come in upon you and have hit your mind. He's made you feel like you're the only one suffering. You're the only one going through. Ain't nobody listening. And don't nobody want God. Don't let that devil give you that message. If you are elder and a leader in the church, it's some folks that won't out. It's some folks that don't want what they in. It's some people that grown tired of their sins. You got to remember, you ain't come out the first somebody said till you come to Jesus. You know you didn't stop down. Don't lie to yourself. Amen. They told you what you was doing was wrong, and you kept on in your wrong. But it was the Lord that used them to tell you to put something on your mind. And you went on and some of us went on many years. And one day after pining away in our sin, one day we got tired. Amen. And we said, look here, I've done everything I know to do and all it did is mess me up. But Lord, look at here, I found and heard that you are deliverer. Here I am, I need you. I need you. Save me and deliver me. So take courage. Let hope jump up in your heart. Be strengthened in this message because God is calling and counting on the elders. He's counting on those that have walked with God to stand up and be a witness and be an example on how to love. Amen. Don't just be putting folks down. I mean, look at here. Some of these preachers, they get in their attitude. Amen. Because they see other preachers preaching stuff off. Well, don't let it work you up. Amen. Throw a lifeline out there too. If they don't want it, maybe somebody else in here to come on. Amen. Look at here. You got to be comforted if you don't comfort other people. Too much is given, much is required. Amen. He told us freely is given unto you. Now freely give it. You got, we got to teach and preach this gospel in such a way with the spirit of love and compassion. Because it could be you. Amen. That's bound by some damnable doctrine. Mm -hmm. And somebody trying to get you off from over there. Mm -hmm. Ain't no sense of getting no attitude. 
when you know the truth. Now, when you get all bent out of shape, it make me wonder, do you know what you say you know? Because at the end of the day, the word of God is powerful. And it's able to do what needs to be done if he can find somebody to exercise it with the right spirit, the right attitude. Can share it with men and women. Well, see, now, if you want to talk about all that love and, and you know, you are, look at your God. Hey, look, I want you to know something. He said it's not his will that no man perish. He don't want the devil to accomplish on no man, no white man, black man, Indian. It don't make no difference. He did what he did that no man perish. That's why we can't get into the call when we be called the church. He said, teach all nations when we still got Black Panther and Black Power in our blood. Right. Amen. He made all men out of one blood. Amen. Praise the Lord. Filling yourself with all this stuff that got hate in it. You ain't going to never get over roots if you keep on feeding yourself that. You better come higher and know what we're dealing with this spirit. I don't care what we went through in history. Amen. We got to get some Bible history and understand he was calling man to a spiritual level. Not a natural level because you ain't going to be able to stay humble if you do that. So he told him, you cast all your cares upon the Lord and come because he cares for you. Don't let the devil make you feel like God forgot about you. He concerned. He's concerned about you. He concerned about how you praise him. Concerned about your diligence. Concerned about your commitment. He's concerned about what your activity is now. God is concerned. If you sit down on God and sit up under that juniper tree, amen, God is saying, look, all you got to do is cast your cares upon me. And when you cast them, don't cast them with no attitude because you cast them to God. Now, when you pulling down strongholds, you can throw that down with, 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 some, with, some, uh, 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 with some hatred because you hate the devil. But when you cast and cares on the Lord, you watch how you cast them. Don't cast them up with no bad spirit. Don't just be throwing them nowhere they were. You put them in the hands of God. You approach them in humility. I give you this, Lord, because I know you, it means something to you if it means something to me. Yes. And when you can commit that that's in your heart to him, you can back away from that thing. No, he got it in his hand. Yes. And he's in control of that outcome. He can control and he hears your cry. We got to learn as saints, you can not only cast down imagination, you can cast up with your cares on the Lord. Sometimes you gotta cast up your care. Our sons and our daughters, they're not hearing right, they're not hearing right now. Cast your cares up with on the Lord. Yes. At least you find yourself in the gall of bitterness. Lord, you say they choose you, you ain't saying mine. See, the devil got you messed up. Look, Lord, you doing our look at you a saint when he do something for somebody else, kid. You're supposed to rejoice like it's yours. You're supposed to understand, oh, thank you, Lord. Amen. I realize, amen, I'm numbered with the blessed. Amen. You're supposed to be excited. When God bless one, he bless us all. And if you can get in that attitude and that disposition and that spirit, then the glory of the Lord will come upon your children. But you got to learn how to be happy for one another. But the devil comes in to get folks attitude with one another. He don't want sister so-so, amen, loving sister Jojo. Amen. He comes up in there and bring all them wicked spirits with him. And the next thing you know, you got envy and jealousy and strife. Amen. Working up in there. And the devil is coming up in there still in the love, still in all the concern. Amen. For one another that we're supposed to have towards one another. And next thing you know, he's running through our children. He's running through everything because, I mean, our spirits ain't right. But I want to beckon you and caution you. You keep a right attitude. You keep an excellent spirit because the Lord do care. He is concerned. He ain't forgot. Amen. I don't care how long it's been. Amen. Amen. You keep trusting and believing God. And God know how to do what no other power can do. So it said, cast them on me because I care for you. Now I need you to be sober. Amen. I need you to be sober. I need you to have a clear mind. I need you to not be all over the place. I need you to understand and stay in the spirit that you can be led by me because I lead those that's walking in the spirit. I need you to be sober. Don't get intoxicated. Don't don't let stuff get on your nerves. Don't let stuff move you in a bad attitude, in the wrong way of thinking. I found out just observing in life, when you take on the wrong spirit, the devil will line up everything. Amen. To sweep you and knock you on out. Amen. Because 
all he got to do is take you backwards. He can't take you forward. Right. And when you stop walking in the right attitude, you're going backwards. Amen. And it's just a matter of time. But the Lord is saying, be sober and be sound. That you don't get intoxicated. That the enemy don't give you a negative attitude about God or your neighbor. Amen. You got to realize, Lord, I'm looking unto you. The author and finisher of my faith. I want my fruit, amen, to remain and multiply. I want you I want you to use me for your glory. Amen. I see through the Bible all you did was good. You was wounded for transgressions. You was bruised for iniquity. Everybody didn't handle you right. They didn't understand and see, but that didn't stop you from doing the will. It's not about, see, we too caught up in. Look how he hurt this. See, that's what I'm talking about. I got some relatives. All they want to talk about is what they're going through. But if you're going to be a help to them, you want to let them know Jesus went through it to bring you through it. At the end of the day, you should want strength. If you in a hole, you fell in a pit, you don't need nobody just to get down there and be stuck like you. Amen. They know how to reach down there and get you a pat of that. Ain't no sense of us both sitting down in that pit. Somebody got to have strength. Get me up and out of this thing. You got to be in carriage so you can encourage others. As I conclude here, he said, you be sober and you be vigilant because your adversary is the devil. Amen. He comes to oppose you. He come not to bless you. He hates believers. He hates mankind. He not only hates believers, he hates sinners. He hates mankind. Why is that? Because we were made in his image and likeness. Every time he see a man, even when he see a drunkard, the devil hate him. Amen, because that man might have lost the likeness, but he still got the image. It makes him realize and think about God. Amen, he hates mankind. He's on with true hate. He come to destroy. He realized I'm lost and I don't want y'all to make it. And so I come to deceive the whole world. I, I, I come to give you bad spirits. I come to disconnect you from God the Father. I come to cause confusion. I come to get in the minds of the people. But the Lord said, I come that you might have life. I come that you might have peace. I want you to see the devil on every hand. I want you to start seeing yourself like I see you. Quit talking about, oh, that's my thought. Learn how to bring every thought into captivity. And if that thought don't line up with the word of God, don't you receive it. You take that's what's in line with the word. If the thought come and say you weak, no, 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 no. You take that thought and cast it down. And you take on what the Lord has given you. Because he's giving you strength. And you a new creature. You can make it. He ain't never tell you you can't make it. He said you can make it because I'm going to help you to make it. Somebody say amen. When we look at here, it's the devil that Peter was bringing the attention to. He said, look, he's as a roaring lion. And I said, Lord, you made us to know he's as a roaring lion. He said, son, he got the same then. He got the same aggressiveness as a lion. He got the same attitude to attack like a lion. Mm -hmm. So it take another lion to bring down that lion. Y'all know we don't watch these in no TV. You saw them lions, and sometimes they walk their territory. They get ready to try to change God, and the lion gonna try to ch gonna challenge the one that's the leader of the pack. Well, I want you to know who Jesus is. Huh? He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's that lion that's most stronger, greater, more powerful than this one. Because he did say, I would be like you, as you. Look at him, but he's not greater than the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. And when he's in you and rise up in you, amen, an aggressiveness come all over you. Amen. That the saints rise up in a fighting spirit. It's time to fight the devil and not one another. We got to understand what we are up against is spirit. Paul told us over there in Ephesians, we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principality, spiritual wickedness, demonic powers in high places. He admonished the church and I'm saying tonight elders, put on the whole arm 
storm of God. You quit whining so much and quit complaining so much. Amen. That you can see this thing the right way. Amen. God loves you and he loves his people. Amen. Because when you take the wrong attitude because you get whooped, you will start treating folks like you feel. Amen. Talking to people with disdain and disrespect. Amen. We got them on the right on the YouTubes and we got preachers that's just talking to people with no respect. I mean just no respect. Don't have the spirit of God. Calling folks name. Look, look, God love his people. I don't care what nobody said. Even when Israel was carried away captive, he loves his people. Amen. You got to know when God is using the vessel. When a man got his spirit in there, that's his spirit. That ain't God. Amen. And you got to know the difference between the two. So he are the hour. You got to know your spirit from the devil and God. That you can see who's operating in the right spirit. And God's spirit is always to lift you up. God's spirit is always to encourage you. It's always to help you. He don't have attitude by helping you. He said, my God, the weary and the heavenly and all of them can come unto me. I don't make, it makes no difference what they've done and how they've done it. If you tired, come on to me. I'm not holding nothing against you. I'll save you. I'll cleanse you. I'll perform an operation upon you. I'll put in you a new spirit and a new heart. It makes no difference what you've done and how long you've been in it. After you get through with God, he makes a new creature. Somebody say hallelujah. And so Peter was teaching them. He said, your adversary, the devil, amen, he's coming, but look, God will give you power to resist him. You can resist him when he comes. If you remain in righteousness and remain in his ways, every time he comes, it won't work on you because there's no weapon that he can form against you that's going to prosper because you are his anointed. You got to realize who you are and who you belong unto. And I want the church to know because it ain't being told you got power with God. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you got power over the devil. Don't let nobody make you so sophisticated and you so high-minded that you don't get out here and no, all it ain't the devil, it's just us. I mean, some of us are setting them doctrine so we done dissected the exegesis of the word and we say enemy is in me. Look here, that sounds very comical. Amen. But I need you to know the adversary is the devil. And we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Now what the devil will do, he'll get you to choose the wrong thing. But once you choose it, he takes over in you. Amen. At the end of the day, it's time for the saints to realize what we up against. What has caused all this hurt and confusion. The devil is behind it. And if you read your book long enough and get over in Revelation, at the end I heard it in the words. He said they looked at him and said, this is the one, is this the one that deceived the whole world? I mean this the one that did all the deception? Had everybody fighting all mean and ugly? This the one that was killing the white man and the black man the black man killing himself? He was behind all this? You know how it is today, poverty making us do it. And you know, look at it in our community that we done got all the educated and won't use the scripture when we want to. Look at here. It, I got I always told people I've experienced things in my life that the white man did not do. Amen. I mean my car got stolen and went by the white man. They ripped my rims off and it went by the white man. I mean my daughter went through some trauma and it went by the white man. Look, you get out of my face with all that. That don't move me. I realize it's the devil that's behind this. The devil will use a white man, he'll use a black man. He'll use you if he let him. Amen. He don't care. He's just looking for a yielded vessel. But the church needs to know we got an adversary and it's the devil. Hallelujah. But God give us power to resist. So resist me and I ain't got to yield. Oh, he came and I heard him talking. But after he talked, I talked. And I told him where to get off him. Yes. I didn't sit right there and say, oh, you know that's right. That's so I, that's right. I mean, ain't folks dirty. That show sure is because of, no, no, no. I didn't come into no communication with him. Because evil communication corrupt good manners. Yes, I didn't do like Eve. Mm -hmm. And said, mm, you did say something interesting. Yeah, he wants us to be as he, he don't want us to be like you. Well, let me, I mean, oh, that's interesting. No, 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 no. I'm not talking to him that long. Don't let him finish his message. 
Do like Jesus did. Some folks be like, let me talk. I'm not letting you talk if you're not saying the things of God. I don't want to hear it. All right. Peter got the going. He said, stop it right there. <laughs> Satan, get thee behind me. Somebody said, see, he told Peter he was saying, that's because you're on that lower level. He was talking to the devil that used Peter. And once he cut that spirit off, you didn't never hear Peter doing that no more. So it wasn't Peter. He recognized the devil is talking. Oh, bless his name. And that's what God wants his people. I thank God tonight. And what we say, we preach out of care and concern. Amen. That the Lord has for his people. Amen. This is the hour in time that we got to realize something here. Amen. And be alert and understand the devil is on the prowl and the Lord is watching them. But he's saying, look, I got to exalt my people. I got to take them higher. So I'm a, I'm a, I see what he's doing. But I want the devil to know they ready. Yes. Oh, y'all know that's how he did, Joe. Devil just walking around, pacing. He's looking at every going to and forth. He's like, I got all of them. I got them. He looking for the folks he ain't got. Mm -hmm. He said, I just consider my servant Joe. Mm -hmm. Oh, him. Oh, I, 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 you know, I see what's up with Joe. You got that hedge around him. Mm -hmm. right. And all that you move that hedge, I make him curse you to the face. Boy, he didn't know Joe had relationship. And my God, God said, I tell you what, you go try him and test him, but don't touch his soul. Because I'm going to teach mankind when you come in on him, they will come to learn, I didn't do all that, you did it. Right. Old Testament, they felt like, and some people still believe, like God did that to Job. No, he didn't. Mm. The devil did that to his children. Right. The devil did, oh, what you know God allowed and God allowed, because he knew where Job was at with him. He realized Job wasn't going to dis, uh, have this taint towards him. Amen. And God cared about Job. You got to remember all that stuff that happened to Job. That earth stuff, that earthly stuff God gave him could give a mother. Them, them wait with children. I mean, look at here, consequences of sin. Yes. Job praying and making sacrifices. Devil thought he was doing something. After he got through doing what he did, Job fell before God. Didn't blame God, didn't question God. And said, blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. He didn't even realize it wasn't that the Lord took it away. The devil did all that. And Job did better than us and didn't have uh, didn't have the information that we have about the adversary. He didn't even know the, the, the meeting that went on between God and the devil. Amen. And he still maintained his integrity. And here we are, got all the New Testament teaching. He done told us and gave us warning of him. And we still get an attitude with God. That's because our relationship is not where it should be. It's time to get exalted. Get in the trial and get in there and learn all you can learn. Know God's strength. He's more than able that we can be exalted because he adds to your spiritual stature. Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you tonight. I thank you for this word of encouragement. A direct word to give us to be alert and to warn us of the adversary that's on the prowl. In seeing this on tonight, I realize and see what you're up to, God. You're getting ready to exalt your people because you said they that know they God shall be strong and do exploit. And we have called upon you for a greater anointing. We have called upon you for higher heights and deeper depths. Lord, in the midst of what we're going through, we realize this is test and that we the saints we win and already won so God I pray God in Jesus name that a spirit of resistance would rise up in the church in the face of all the adversity and affliction and conflict Lord where they mourn more morning we say God give comfort where they're whining give them strength where they're hurting heal them Lord where they have fell down lift them on up and put a fight down within them to fight the death on every hand. In the name of Jesus, uh, you've given the church power we can bind, but we can't bind if we don't know what we're fighting against. Uh, you give the church how to loose, uh, but we can't loose nothing if we don't know what we're loosing. Lord, bring the 
church to that spiritual level and all of our studying and digging help the Lord the church to put it together put the five old ministry among the saints let that voice come up and be a trumpet among your people that the horn will be blown that the war cry will be cried out that the saints can come on and fight a good fight their souls that need to be saved that's under the principalities of air that's under the uh, under the control and captivity of the devil himself and we realize you paid the price and Lord we're looking to you to let this place be a place of deliverance bring in the captive and we don't care what they bound to they can be bound by homosexuality and lesbianism drugs and alcohol they can, whatever it is let them come on in into the father's house that they can find rest for they weary soul. You help us and bring us. We don't want no attitudes towards nothing. We don't want our spirit to be bad towards nothing. But help us to always remember we once was in the same condition that those are that are without you. So let the spirit of compassion and love rest upon the church. Oh my God in general. Let that spirit of love and compassion rest in the heart of the believers that they might be the vessels in the church you're calling for. That souls can be saved and delivered and develop the relationship with you. It is in Jesus' name we ask these things. And all the God's people said amen. amen. Put your hands together. You go with God. He'll go with you. God keep you is our prayer. Amen. I 